Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. This is AutoLine Daily for January 24th, and now the news, which today seems to be dominated by what's going on in Europe. Because as all you well know, the financial crisis in Europe has a lot of people worried. But according to Wards, the head of Ford of Europe is not one of them. Stephen O'Dell says the debt crisis will not put the brakes on the world. Ford analysts predict that European car sales will decline, but only slightly from 2011. But you know, in a fascinating side note, Steve O'Dell also predicts that in four to five years, Russia will be the largest car market in Europe, beating out Germany. Demographics are on Russia's side. It's home to around 143 million people. Germany has about 82 million. General Motors is putting enormous pressure on Opel to finally become profitable again. Now Bloomberg reports that Opel is in talks with SAIC to sell cars in China. SAIC already has a joint venture with GM, so this is a logical step. But Opel is talking about exporting cars from Europe to China, where they're going to be slapped with a 25% import tax. And while Chinese car buyers will happily pay higher prices for imported Mercedes, BMWs, Audis, and Porsches, it's not likely that Opel is going to enjoy that level of acceptance. And besides, Opel's real problems are with excess capacity. Until GM addresses that problem, nothing is going to make Opel profitable. Automakers fight for every ounce of weight that they can take out of a vehicle. Today's bulky and bloated lead-acid batteries are prime, low-hanging fruit that's ready for picking. Paving the way for their demise, Wards reports that Germany's VDA just adopted a 48-volt standard for vehicles with electric assist, also known as mild hybrids. French supplier Vallejo is working on a new type of lithium-ion battery for the job, and it weighs just 11 pounds. Lead clunkers tip the scales at around 44 pounds or more. It's interesting. The industry's been talking about abandoning the 12 volt system for 20 years or more. But it's no surprise automakers are dragging their feet. Look how long it took for them to switch to 12 volt technology. Cars still ran on six volt electrical systems well into the 1950s. Volkswagen is showing off the four door version of the UP before it goes on sale. It has the same engines, trim levels and dimensions as the two door model. It will be first made available in Germany in March and then will be launched in the rest of Europe by early summer. Pricing for the four-door up in Germany starts at around $13,400, which is just $600 more than the two-door model. Well, now it's official. Saab's North American operations will be liquidated. Earlier this month, 80% of the employees were laid off and the headquarters will be closed next month. Currently, the company is trying to sell its U.S. parts distribution business, and dealers are expected to decide this week if they're going to file for bankruptcy or wait for the final liquidation. As you know, the upcoming Dodge Dart is based on the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, and now Alfa is bragging that the Giulietta is the best-selling hatchback it's ever offered. Last year, Alfa sold 80,000 Giuliettas in Europe, with about 45,000 sold in Italy. The Dodge Dart will be replacing the Dodge Caliber, and last year only 35,000 Calibers were sold in the American market. Now that doesn't mean that the Dart will sell as well as the Giulietta, but it's got to be a good omen. I'm Seamus McElroy in Carlsbad, California, and coming up next, the look at the all-new Honda CRV. Drivers who want to get the most out of their cars. It's Bridgestone or nothing. For the last several years, the current Honda CRV has been the best selling SUV in America, and the company hopes that the all new version can do just the same. 
This is the fourth generation of the CRV, which gets a new look both inside and out. So from the design perspective, overall the vehicle maintains uh, the exterior size, uh, but we've added a new aggressive front end on the vehicle, gave it a much more bolder approach. Uh, we've kept the rear end of the signature CRV taillights, gave it a more uh, stylish approach leading it into the side of the vehicle, giving the overall vehicle a more aerodynamic shape. Interior is all new. Uh, everything from a new gauge cluster to a full center console, standard uh, color TFT screen, standard full center console. The seating position is lower and more sedan-like than the previous CRV, but I actually prefer the old setup, which is more SUV-like. Under the hood is an updated 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder gasoline engine mated to a five-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 23 miles per gallon city and 31 highway for the two-wheel drive model and 22 miles per gallon city and 30 highway for the all-wheel drive model. That's an improvement of two miles per gallon in combined driving for both versions. Currently, the all-wheel drive model makes up 65% of sales, and the company expects that to be the case with the new model. Some of the big improvements for the all-new CRV came on the inside. It's got more cargo space, a lower floor so it's easier to get stuff into, and the seats are very easy to fold. Other new standard features include Bluetooth, Honda's iMid display, and a multi-angle rear-view camera. And it's also equipped with electronic power steering for the first time. Like the new Civic, it's hard to say that the 2012 CRV is significantly better than the outgoing model. It's in a growing and competitive segment, so we'll just have to wait and see if the CRV's improvements are enough for it to remain on top. Thanks for that report, Seamus. The 2012 CRV just went on sale. Pricing starts at just over $23,000, and the top trim model with navigation and all wheel drive begins at over 30 grand. And as you may know, the CRV was one of the finalists for the North American Truck of the Year Award. A programming note here, we're going to be webcasting live from the Washington DC Auto Show starting at noon on Thursday. Some of the guests that I'll be interviewing include Margot Oge, who runs that part of the EPA that oversees all vehicle regulation, Roland Huang, an environmentalist with the Natural Resources Defense Council, Phil Murtaugh, former GM executive now with the electric car manufacturer Coda, and Jake Jones from Mercedes-Benz, as along as a few others. And you can help me interview them. I'd love to get the questions that you would like to ask these people. Go to our website, autoline.tv, go to the John's Journal section of the website, scroll down to where it says, submit your questions to our Washington DC guests and click on the link to submit your questions. I bet this is going to be a very lively discussion. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.